If you've been thinking about investing in real estate for a few years now and you still haven't taken the plunge, you are not alone. Every week when I talk to new clients, I hear similar stories and two big reasons why people hesitate to start is because they get scared. Scared of failing because they don't know where the markets might head after they get in or scared of failing because they don't know what they're doing. If you're in the same boat, listen up. In this video, I'm going to address these two big fears and then try to help you work through them so that you can finally invest in real estate. If you like content like this, please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you see more videos like this made specifically for real estate investors in Toronto. Let's address the first big fear, which is that you're scared that this big investment will end up going south. It's true, real estate is a big investment. A Toronto condo will need at least $150,000 in starting capital, and a starting house with two units in Toronto will need close to $250,000 in capital. Now, assuming that you do have sufficient investment capital for all the options, the wiser thing to do isn't to choose your investment based on how much they cost, but rather to choose the option that can generate the best expected returns at a risk level that you are comfortable with. Once you do this, you'll realize that real estate offers the best risk adjusted returns and it is a safer investment compared to stocks and bonds. Here's the thing, the majority of our Canadian population are still homeowners and in fact, our government is the biggest real estate owner in Canada. So principal protection is actually extremely important when it comes to shaping housing policy. So even though the government doesn't want real estate prices to go up too quickly, they also can't afford to have real estate prices come down either because this will tank our population's net worth and hurt Canada's GDP, which is super reliant on real estate. So from this perspective, in a way, real estate is actually lower risk because it does offer a good level of principal protection. Take a look at this chart from Thomson Reuters where they stack different investment options based on their risk and expected reward. According to their analysis, you can see that real estate is comparable in terms of risk to the safest investment out there, government bonds, and it's safer than corporate bonds and of course any stocks out there. And even at such a low level of risk, it's expected long-term returns trump everything else. But if you feel like you can't rely on past results to predict future results, let's look at fundamentals. In Canada, especially Toronto, we have a housing supply shortage and increasing supply takes time. It requires availability of land, zoning changes from various levels of government, financing complexities, and time to build. So it's not that easy to increase supply quickly. At the same time, demand continues to build up quickly here. So this combination is the basic recipe for housing prices to continue to climb upwards in the long run. Now, besides demand from end user buyers and mom and pop investors like you and I, we're now seeing more increasing demand from institutional investors too. Fixed income funds who traditionally invest in bonds are now seeking alternative investments through real estate as an inflation hedge. Public pensions are also starting to invest in residential real estate. Even other real estate funds who used to only invest in big commercial properties are now redirecting their focus to single family homes because of better rent yield, lower vacancies, and better appreciation opportunities compared to other options. At current rock bottom interest rates, bonds can't protect against inflation, so that's why funds have to look for other ways to generate better yields. So basically, in the long run, prices are headed upwards because of supply and demand, and in the short term, as long as interest rates stay lower than inflation, we're also gonna see higher real estate investment demand simply because funds need better investment yields. Now, if you can move past the first fear, and you are now determined to start investing in real estate, let's move on to the second big fear, being scared of failing because you don't know what you're doing. Of course, it can be scary because you are doing something that you've never done before, but many of your unknowns are actually known by experienced investors, like what makes a good investment property or how to find good tenants. The key here is really to get help from experts in the field, Follow their roadmap, build up your experience and confidence so that you can keep moving forward. 
I hate to break it to you, but there will probably be problems along the way. But the more important thing is that you will be able to overcome them if you do have the right team to back you up. The actual harder part is probably to overcome the psychological aspects. Nobody knows the answers to everything that's going to happen in the future, and this is the thing that bogs down many new investors and prevents them from making decisions and taking action. But just because we don't know all the answers doesn't mean that we can't make good decisions. If you ask us, we'll guide you through our four-stage process so that you can make more fact-based decisions effectively. The first stage is really to know your constraints so that you can narrow down your sandbox. Budget is a big one and that's why we say getting a mortgage pre-approval is always step number one. At this point, you should also mark down any other requirements that you need. For example, you need your investment property close to home. Stage two, once you know your constraints and share it with us, we'll show you different investment opportunities along with our insights what's involved, and what expected returns are like. There might also be qualitative considerations. For example, this big reno can generate better returns, but it's also a massive undertaking. There's already enough things for you to learn as a new investor, so we tried to steer you in the right direction based on where you stand. Stage number three. This is where you compare expected returns, weigh the qualitative pros and cons, and then choose the investment option that will generate the best expected outcome for you. Now, instead of going with your gut, this removes a lot of the bias so that you can actually make better decisions quickly. At the end of the stage, we'll have a clear, narrow investment scope to focus on, and so we'll be able to search for opportunities more effectively. And finally, stage number four is when we get the ball running and actively search for properties on the market. We have everything ready and know what we should be looking for, so it's all about making fast decisions at this point so you can actually catch those great investment opportunities when they come along. When there's doubt like, should you wait for a better opportunity or wait for the markets to come down? Just remember this. When you wait, you might get better returns, but you'll definitely miss out on returns that you can get otherwise during that waiting period. Let's say you can get 16% ROI on property A, but you might possibly get 18% ROI per year if you eventually find that perfect opportunity. If you do find that perfect opportunity a year later, then you actually lose out on 16% in ROI. At 2% difference per year, this means you'll need to wait 8 years just to break even with property A, so getting in the market sooner is actually very important. When you work with us, we're the real estate investing experts that you can count on. We're not just your regular real estate brokerage. We specialize in real estate investing, so we'll take time to understand your requirements and your preferences and then provide you with data, projections, and insights so that you can make data-driven investment decisions effectively. Things don't stop after we help you buy your investment property. We will continue to guide you through renovations advice, connect you with our network of contractors, plus we can help you with leasing and property management if you need it. And things still don't stop there. Our goal is really to grow with you so you can count on us to be there to help you review your portfolio and make recommendations to help you grow when you're ready for your next investment property. If you want to learn more about our services, we'd be happy to schedule a call to answer all of your questions. Just connect with us by heading to the link I'll put in the description below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and look for us on Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn if you do want to hear from us more regularly. I wish you all the best in your real estate investing journey. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!